Both assistant state attorneys are present, both defense counsel and Mr. Seavers. State's ready? Yes, Your Honor. Defense is ready? Yes, sir. What do we Yes, ma'am. She said, do you want Ms. Groves back on the stand? State's ready? Yes, Your Honor. Defense is ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you need any water, ma'am? It would be good to have some here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm clumsy. Well, yeah, I'm yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Please be seated. I'll ask our jurors again, have you followed my instructions, not talked about the case among yourselves with anybody else or looked up to any of the people or places involved, even if you did so inadvertently? <clears throat> now would be the time to raise your hand and let me know. For the record, no jurors lifted their hand. State. Mary Ann Groves. And would you spell your last name, please? G R O V E S. And Ms. Groves, were you the mother of Teresa Sears? Yes, I was. And have you prepared a victim impact for this jury? Yes, I have. I would ask at this time that you give that victim impact to the jury. Okay. Uh, the weekend of June 26, 2015 started out as one of the happiest weekends of my life. I was on vacation with my four children. These were special times as a mother because I didn't get to be with all of my children at the same time very often. So I always ended these visits, family visits, with a photo of all of us. But little did I realize that that would be the last family photo I would take with all my children. I no longer desire to take a photo of me and my children. I won't do it because my beautiful Teresa is no longer here. What I thought would be a weekend that I would treasure for years to come became a weekend that ended the life I knew. It became a weekend filled with horrors which would unfold beyond my comprehension. It was the weekend my Teresa was murdered in the most brutal, unimaginable way. It was the weekend that Teresa's eight and 11-year-old daughters would become motherless. The weekend our family would lose a life force that we, her friends and patients, and anyone fortunate enough to meet her relied upon her to lift us up teach us how to heal ourselves and challenge us to be the best people we could be. My daughter Teresa was an extraordinary woman, a powerful force determined, determined to change the world. She had enormous compassion for all people, especially the neglected and the abandoned. And that passion could be seen in the way she lived her life. I used to call her my modern day Mother Teresa. I always, <clears throat> excuse me, I always knew she would grow up to do great things, and she did. Teresa's journey as a doctor brought her to new frontiers in healing. After becoming board certified as a doctor of internal medicine and going into private practice, she wasn't satisfied with the Western medicine 
what Western medicine had to offer her patients. So she went back to school to get her master's of science in metabolical medicine. Still, she wasn't, she still felt something was missing. So she became certified from the American Board of Holistic and Integrative Medicine. Even that wasn't enough for her. So she went further and was certified in functional and anti-aging medicine. And again, she still wasn't satisfied. She found the missing piece when she explored Eastern medicine and energetic therapies and became certified in energy medicine. She now understood she needed to address the mind, the body, and the spirit. And patients began thriving. As a doctor, Teresa had a very unique relationship with her patients. She loved them, she listened to them, and she prayed with them. She used to say to them, being healthy is your choice. Getting you there is my passion. She was sincerely invested in giving them everything she had so that they could live the healthiest life possible. Her drive to educate and empower her patients to take responsibility for their health and well-being distinguished Teresa from her peers. Countless patients of Teresa have reached out to share their experiences with my daughter, their beloved doctor, and, and recounted how she literally saved their lives and changed their perceptions of what they were capable to do. But her vision for healing went far beyond her patients that she saw daily. Teresa volunteered her services with many different organizations, including the Wings of Shelter through the church, Good Church, Good Shepherd Ministry, Not For Sale Campaign, Make Way for Partners, and Our Mother's Home. All of these organizations revolved around supporting underserved women, children, and homeless in her community and beyond. And as a volunteer and later board president at our mother's home here in Southwest Florida, Teresa was able to make a difference in the lives of these teenage girls who were left pregnant as a result of violence. Teresa gave these girls the mother's love they never knew. She taught them virtues that they never knew. And she taught them how to be mothers and love their babies. And when the girls were aged out of the program, Teresa brought them into her home with their babies until safe living arrangements could be made. <clears throat> Countless pool parties and holiday parties were hosted by Teresa at her home. And one year she hosted a Christmas party and hired Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus for the children but it was the teen moms who were screaming with excitement because they had never seen Santa or get to sit on his lap. And I remember Teresa telling me through tears in her eyes that her heart was ready to burst for the joy, from the joy from these girls. And still her vision to help others went beyond Southwest Florida. She reached out to the children of war raged the four Africa where thousands of orphan children endured unspeakable acts of violence. Later, she adopted two boys. And although these boys were not able to leave Africa, Teresa provided financial support for food, housing, and schooling, wrote them letters and prayed to them every night when she tucked her own two daughters to bed. Teresa's dear friend, the Reverend Dr. Judy Lee, told us that Teresa lived her life like Christ, caring for the homeless, providing free medical care, and coming to their aid in the middle of the night to get them admitted into programs that required a doctor's consent. 
but she didn't just give them a checkup. She held them in her arms, these homeless people, and loved them and prayed with them. There are many friends, family, patients, and strangers who could tell you how Teresa came to their aid, whether sitting up all night with a friend near death, interceding for a patient who needed a Teresa to talk to their surgeons, making funeral arrangements for a friend who lost their son, to cancer, and to more. Teresa touched the lives of so many people, and she was on the cusp of reaching the world. Her larger-than-life personality, brilliance, beauty, and unique perspective on healing landed her a spot as a host to a television series called Pathways to Healing. She had started filming several episodes that would never see airtime. There, Teresa would have been able to reach the masses with her mission to enlighten humanity of their God-given right and power to heal themselves. But she never got to do that. Millions will never know or hear Teresa's new paradigm for healing. And of course, the biggest loss falls upon her two daughters whom Teresa loved with all her heart. These two girls have been robbed of their remarkable mother, their home, their pets, their possessions, their family and friends. Teresa will not be able to love and guide them. She won't be there when they graduate high school or when they need their mother to kiss away tears from their first heartbreak. She won't be able to impact her wisdom and life experiences. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. They will miss watching her mother dancing and singing in the kitchen while cooking up a storm of their favorite dishes. She won't be there to cheer them on and support them to share their dreams and successes. Her daughters will miss their mother on every birthday and every holiday, on their wedding day, and when they have children of their own. They will spend the rest of their lives hoping to hold on to the memories of the mother they once knew and trying to forget the nightmare she endured the last days, moments of her life. And what of me? I have lost my dear Teresa, my precious girl who I loved beyond measure, and one of her brothers and sisters, and her many friends. We have lost our Teresa, the light of our lives, the star of our family, who loved us all so fiercely. It has been hard for all of us to go on with our daily lives. The void is unimaginable. She was our strength, our inspiration, and our caretaker. When we didn't know what to do, Teresa wouldn't hesitate to tell us, even if we didn't ask and even if we didn't want to hear the truth. She was our rock. She was our joy. We have all lost so much. Not only have we lost our Teresa, but my children have lost the mother they once knew. because a big part of me died with her on June 28, 2015. This extraordinary woman, my daughter Teresa, did extraordinary things. She gave of herself. She did more in her short life than most people do in 10 lifetimes.
She wanted to awaken and enlighten the world. And when she would be defeated from the obstacles that would cut in her way and things weren't happening fast enough for her, she would call me up and cry. Mom, why is this taking so long? I have so much to say. And I would say to her, Teresa, you're doing great. And I know you will reach the masses. And she did. I just never dreamed it would be this way. Teresa was a gift from God and a gift to all of us. And we will miss her every day for the rest of our lives. Exhibit number. It's exhibit number 123S. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> go back to Osler, William Osler, one of the fathers of medicine. He actually said, a patient knows what's wrong with them if you listen to them. And by the time you're done interviewing them, before you've done any tests, and back then I didn't really have a lot of testing to do, um, or examine them, you should know what's wrong with the patient also. And so I think with all the technology, we've gotten even farther away from that intuition. And so when I started on my journey of really looking for the science behind what we're doing, not only did I find that the National Institutes of Health, the whole section of the National Complementary Centers for Complementary and Alternative Medicine recognizes this mind, body, and energy medicine. It's one of their sects. And so I found out that there's this whole role of intuition and healing, that this plays a role. And it was funny because I intuitively used to always say to my patients, you know, it almost doesn't really matter what medicine you're getting, whether you're going conventional or you're going holistic. If you don't believe that that practitioner wants to help you. Hi, I'm Dr. Teresa Sievers. And as I promised you, I was going to be bringing you different modalities of healing. I think it's so exciting for people to find new ways of preventative health. This is one of the largest problems with our healthcare system. We don't do preventative medicine. We do reactive medicine. And we wait until people are good and sick, and then we start treating them. But just what if? we actually stopped and looked at how to do preventative medicine. What might our healthcare look like? Maybe we wouldn't be ranked 32 in health in the world. Maybe we'd be one of the higher countries. I have today with me a special guest, Dr. Robert Karolovich. He's a board certified family practice medicine who attended the Eastern Virginia Medical School. You're asking that it be admitted? Yes. Actually, to make it part of the record. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Um, that's all. It's a part of the record. And with that, the state has nothing further to present at this time. The state having um, rested uh, their portion of this proceeding, we're going to take a brief recess. I'm going to ask again that you not talk about the case among yourselves or with anybody else, and we'll be with you momentarily. <laughs> Please be seated. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, just for the record, so it's clean, uh, our, our alternate juror who had a note for my clerk, um, we originally had told him to be here Monday. He's very conscientious and uh, showed up, even though he was called and told to come Tuesday. And 
and uh, wanted to be sure that my clerk had his email for any further updates and he's provided it at that time he's provided it again with a thank you note for my clerk uh, does either side need to see this you can if you would like okay no sir I'm just we'll make it a part of the record but it'll be redacted as to his personal information unless there's an objection no objection from the state no sir okay you need a few moments, or would you like to walk through the instructions, um, or do you want to do that at the end before we go to closings? Maybe we should do it at the end after your presentation, the more I'm thinking about it. All right, sir. Uh, you have all your witnesses ready? Yeah, but just a, just a couple of minutes to check on one your issue. Your photos? Yes. Okay, we'll be in recess. Just let me know when everybody's ready. I'm going to sit Thank still you. and uh, in formal recess.